Well, welcome back, it's Bry from JukeBlaster.com and today we're going to have a quick look at the new coin kit board. Now, uh, you're probably wondering what the coin kit board is for. If, if you've not um, used our products before and you're wondering what it's all about, then I just want to introduce the coin kit idea and what it does. So basically, if you're building a jukebox, um, you'll probably already have your software installed, either Videobox or Duke Blaster Pro, and you'll probably have a coin acceptor, something like this, loads of wires coming out of it, and you'll also probably have a power supply for your coin acceptor to power it up, and you'll have a USB connection from your computer um, uh, connection for your jukebox software. So great, we've got all these wires um, and things to connect up, but they don't connect together. And that's, that's what CoinKit does. It connects all these devices together into your computer um, to, to get your jukebox uh, taking coins. Okay, let's take a look at the, at the new coin kit board. Okay, um, so let's take a look. I've got my pack here, and this is exactly how your coin kit should arrive in an envelope, padded envelope like this. And it'll come inside another pack, and you can see there we've got some um, very, very basic quick start instructions that you must read. Um, before you start connecting things up, you don't want to be blowing up uh, your computer and your coin acceptor and things like that and the board. So make sure that you read those um, instructions before you, you get going. Okay, so this is the coin kit board. Now just bring it close to the camera so you can have a look. Uh, USB obviously there. And there's the DC. Um, 12 volts DC coin jack so that you can put your uh, power supply in there for your coin acceptor and we've got uh, connections along the edge there is a screw connection so you don't need you don't need to be soldering or doing anything like that this can be set up in minutes uh, seconds and minutes um, it, it's not a day job um, it's very easy very quick let's take a look here we've got some buttons uh, you've got a credit button, you'll be able to apply credit just by pressing that button. Uh, Save so you messing about in the software if you just want to apply some credit. You've got a service button here that also, that will open the service menu on either Videobox or Duke Blaster Pro. So you don't have to start typing in um, on, on the touch screen. You, you, you can just press that button, that will open the service menu control panel, whichever you want to call it. Uh, another interesting feature is this little um, device here which will come to later on. Uh, and I'll tell you what that's all about. I think you'll find that interesting. Uh, nothing much else to see. Um, there's there's the actual coin kit IC or chip uh, that does all the thinking for the board. Uh, that talks to your coin acceptor and all the other peripheral devices. Um, there are some connections along the edge of the board here. You shouldn't connect anything to those at all. They're not for connecting. Those are just the ones we use to program the board. Um, so you won't need to connect or solder anything to those. Those are not used. Um, so that's it. So let's... Uh, why not? Let's, let's do it. Let's connect up the board right now. Okay. okay. Um, so... I'm going to try now to connect up this uh, coin acceptor. Um, this is the KAI638C. You can find these on eBay and just Google it or go on eBay. And they're really, really cheap and they work perfectly well. Um, so all you've got basically is three wires to connect. Um, there is another grey wire here and that's just for electronic um, counter to count coins. You don't need that because 
you already have the ability to count coins in your software so we're only concerned with three wires I uh, don't know if you can see this I'll uh, just try and put it up but basically all you've got here for connections is a red wire which is the positive or 12 volts uh, in and a negative or ground wire which is black and then the coin pulse output wire which is white on this coin mech um, and we're just going to plumb those now into into the coin kit board and you'll see how easy this actually is um, so all we have to do with these screw terminals along the edge of the board firstly the white wire which is the coin output we're going to put that into the screw terminal on the coin kit board that's labelled <coughs> uh, coin, simple as that. Now all you'll need for this is a little electrical screwdriver, nothing more, and just tighten or clamp down that connector. <coughs> and same for the, the ground or negative, it goes in the GND ground terminal, screw terminal there. And we'll just tighten that up. And finally, uh, we'll put in the positive 12 volts red wire into the plus 12V screw terminal and tighten that one down. Okay, so your coin acceptor is now, that's now connected up, so you'll be able to take coins. But we need to put some power in there for your coin acceptor. Um, so here we've got the 12 volt um, power pack um, plug and that will go straight in there just like that simple as that and now your coin acceptor is powered up and that, that will actually that will actually take coins now um, now you should always check at this stage that your coin acceptor is taking coins before you uh, plug this into your computer. Um, at this stage the uh, coin kit board isn't powered up. The power comes in here and goes straight to your coin acceptor via these wires. That's all that's happening now. You're piping uh, power from the power pack to your coin acceptor. So if all is well let's now connect up um, your software on your computer to the coin kit board and that's via a, a USB A to B cable and that just goes in here simple as this you just plug that in and there you go you can see that flashing away you might be able to see that on video but that, that that's flashing that little LED and that tells you now that your coin kit is running and all is well. You'll notice that we've 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 positioned these connectors so that they can all be bundled um, like this, um, kept all in one direction. Basically, if you're building a jukebox cabinet, you'll appreciate how useful this is to have all your cables routed in this way. Very easy, very easy. And at the opposite end, you've got your uh, buttons. That, you, uh, that are clear, there's no wires here so it, it, it's clear to get in there okay so that's basically it it's, it's taken me about three minutes to uh, wire this up so that's how easy it is um, okay so what we're going to do now is take a look at um, showing you the software and putting coins in and things like that okay um, so what we're going to do now is we've got our coin acceptor rigged up and there's the coin kit board and we're just showing you the software this is video box by the way this is the software so it's all rigged up we're just going to try some coins in there and as you can see over there uh, the credit it's at zero at the moment so we're going to just put some coins in uh, this is a pound coin and there you go, let's put some credits on, you can see there. And let's try another coin. There you go, let's put some more credits on. It's as simple as that, and uh, there's no more to it. Um, so, 
there you go, you've rigged up the coin kit in about five minutes and that's the simplest way to get your software going. And the, uh, the buttons at the bottom, uh, you can apply credit using those. If this is inside your jukebox cabinet, you can press the credit button and you'll see some credits appear over there. Just by pressing that button you can see now the credits are going up. That's easy. If you wanted to access the service control panel menu, you could press the service button and that would open the Duke Blaster Pro or Video Box control panel. It's as simple as that. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you now uh, a really cool new feature uh, of CoinKit. And you remember earlier on I, I told you about this little device on the side of CoinKit here. And what that little device is, is an infrared receiver for a remote control. So what you can do, uh, you can order CoinKit on its own, but you can also uh, order with the option of this little remote control. Really cheap, really simple, and what this enables you to do is control your jukebox uh, volume, among other things. Um, of course you can wire um, to these terminals uh, buttons for volume up and down and a reject button. Um, but if you don't want to bother with wiring, you can use this, this little remote control. and it, It's an easy, fast and cheap way uh, to get going if you don't want to run wires or you're not comfortable or confident in, in wiring. Um, it's got various functions like a, a volume control as you'd expect, like this. You can turn up the volume. Let's turn it back down. As well as volume control. You've got a mute button on there. You can mute um, mute the sound. Um, what else have we got? We've got the uh, we've got the jukebox closed. Obviously, you can close uh, your jukebox from this remote, uh, which is a really cool feature. Uh, when when the night's over, you can just close close there. Let's put that back. So you can also add credit uh, with this uh, remote. So if I press this credit button now. Turn the volume down. Uh, you can see the credit going up there. Credit's going up. Uh, that's easy to do. We've got a reject button, obviously. Uh, so if I press that, you'll see at the top there, it's rejecting. It's rejected that track. Um, you've got a power button. Now, depending on if you've got Duke Blaster Pro or Video Box, this can shut down the program, your Duke Box, or it can also shut down your computer. Um, so you might want to check on your software functions for that and, and, and that, that will shut down either the computer or the software or both. Um, if you're listening to music and it's a video or it's got visualizations you can press this button here, this EQ button and you can see visualizations or video. Um, there's also uh, a little uh, feature you've got a number pad here. I don't know if you can see, yes, there you can see that. A little number pad, and you can lock this remote so that it can't be used. Uh, no other remote can be used either. Just by pressing the default one, two, three, four, uh, you should be able to see that there soon. One, two, three, four, and there the remote's disabled. And it's just the same to enable it one, two, three, four. And there it's enabled again. Great little feature if you've got kiddies or anything and you just want to lock this so you don't want anybody to change your uh, jukebox. You can lock that up. You can also change that pin from 1, 2, 3, 4. Obviously there is a way to do that and you can read the CoinKit uh, remote documentation for that. So that's basically it. Cool, cool little remote there. And this is a great idea, as I've said, if, if you don't want to uh, wire um, buttons into your coin kit board for um, volume and reject, which you can do if you wish. Well, I think that's about it. Um, that's my uh, intro and review of coin kit. 
um, have fun. 